Imagine standing by a railway line on a crisp September day. You're there with a crowd of journalists, all cameras ready, waiting for Japan's newest marvel of engineering to make its appearance. You know it's coming, you know it's supposed to be fast, but nothing quite prepares you for the reality of it. One moment, there's an empty track stretching into the distance. The next, a colossal whoosh of air nearly knocks you off your feet. Before your brain can even process what you've seen, or rather, what you've seen, the train is already gone. It's a fleeting silver and blue streak, a ghost that passed by at an astonishing 310 miles per hour. That's precisely what happened in September of this year, 2025. The spectators who had gathered for the test run were left in a state of collective, open-mouthed shock. It was an event that demonstrated speed in a way that's difficult to comprehend. A car on a motorway at 70 miles per hour feels brisk. A conventional high-speed train at 180 miles per hour feels seriously quick. But 310 miles per hour is something else entirely. It's a speed that belongs to the world of aviation, not the world of ground transport. The train, operated by the Central Japan Railway Company, was there and gone in less than a single second. The sound it made was not the familiar clatter of wheels on steel, but a deep futuristic hum that faded as quickly as it arrived, leaving only stunned silence in its wake. This incredible demonstration wasn't just a publicity stunt, it was a profound statement about the future of travel. For those few seconds, everyone present caught a glimpse of what's possible when you rethink the very fundamentals of how a train works. The vehicle didn't just travel along the track, it seemed to defy physics itself, effortlessly slicing through the air with a grace that belied its immense velocity. It was less like a train and more like a low-flying aircraft, tethered to the ground only by an invisible force. It's one thing to read about such speeds in a brochure. But to witness it firsthand is to understand that the rule book for getting from A to B is being completely rewritten. The reaction of the onlookers told the whole story. People lowered their cameras, looked at each other with wide eyes, and a few simply laughed in disbelief. How could something so large move so fast? It was a visceral, almost primal reaction to witnessing a machine push the boundaries of what we thought was achievable. This wasn't just another fast train, it was a piece of the 21st century's vision for the future, made real and roaring past a group of very surprised people in the Japanese countryside. That single fleeting moment perfectly captured the sheer, mind-boggling potential of magnetic levitation technology and set the stage for a new era in transportation. So, what is the secret behind this astonishing speed? The answer isn't a bigger engine or a more aerodynamic shape, though that helps. The real magic lies in its name. Maglev, which is short for magnetic levitation. Unlike every other train you've ever been on, a maglev train has no wheels. It doesn't roll along the tracks at all. Instead, it floats. It hovers about four inches above a specialized track, or guideway, suspended in mid-air by an incredibly powerful and precisely controlled magnetic field. This is the fundamental difference that sets it apart from all conventional rail technology that has existed for the last 200 years. It's a bit like a real-life hoverboard, but one that's the size of a multi-carriage train. This lack of wheels is the key to its incredible performance. Think about a regular train. The friction between the steel wheels and the steel rails is a constant battle. This rolling resistance creates noise, wear and tear, and most importantly, it puts a physical limit on how fast the train can safely go. Maglev technology simply says, what if we got rid of the friction altogether? By using magnets to lift the entire train off the guideway, the primary source of resistance is eliminated. The only thing left for the train to fight is air resistance, which is why they are designed with such sleek aerodynamic noses, much like a jet aircraft. The result is a ride that is not only exceptionally fast, but also remarkably smooth and quiet. The system works using the basic principle of magnetism that we all learned in school, like poles repel and opposite poles attract. The guideway has powerful electromagnets built into it, and so does the underside of the train. To achieve levitation, the magnets on the track and the train are oriented to repel each other, 
pushing the train upwards with enough force to lift its immense weight. Then, to make it move forward, the system rapidly alternates the polarity of the magnets along the guideway. This creates a magnetic wave that pulls the train forward from the front and pushes it from behind, propelling it along the track at immense speed with no moving parts involved. It's an incredibly clever and sophisticated system. The power and polarity of the electromagnets are controlled by a complex computer system that makes thousands of adjustments every second to ensure the train remains stable, centered and at a consistent height above the guideway. It's this precise dance of magnetic forces that allows for both levitation and propulsion. So, when you see a maglev train speeding by, you're not just seeing a fast train. You're witnessing a triumph of physics and engineering, where invisible magnetic forces have been harnessed to lift and propel a massive object at speeds that were once the exclusive domain of science fiction. Just how fast is Japan's new maglev? The test speed of 310 miles per hour is, to put it mildly, seriously quick. To put that into perspective, let's compare it to other fast trains around the world. The famous Shinkansen, or bullet train, also from Japan, is a legend of high-speed rail, but its typical operating speed is around 200 miles per hour. France's TGV and Germany's ICE trains, both icons of European engineering, operate in a similar speed range. These are incredibly fast machines, but the new Maglev is in a completely different category. It travels over 100 miles per hour, faster than some of the quickest conventional trains currently in service. It's the difference between a sports car and a Formula One racer. In fact, Japan already holds the world speed record for a maglev train. Back in 2015, the very same L0 series train reached a staggering 375 miles per hour during a test run on the Yamanashi test line. While its planned operational speed for the new Cho Shinkansen line will be a slightly more sensible 310 miles per hour, that record-breaking run demonstrates the sheer upper limit of the technology. For a long time, the fastest operational train in the world was the Shanghai Transrapid Maglev in China, which has been zipping passengers to the airport at speeds of up to 268 miles per hour since 2002. Japan's new line, once it opens, is set to take that crown and redefine what commuters consider a normal travel speed. However, a world with maglev trains everywhere is not yet upon us. As of 2025, operational maglev lines are still quite rare. There are only seven in the entire world. Four in China, which has invested heavily in the technology for urban transport. Two in South Korea, also serving city routes and Japan's own low-speed Linimo line. These existing lines have proven the concept works reliably, but they are mostly shorter, slower routes compared to the ambitious intercity project Japan is building. The Chuo Shinkansen line, which will eventually connect Tokyo and Nagoya, is the project that aims to make Maglev a true long-distance travel solution. The rarity of these trains comes down to one significant hurdle, the cost. Building a Maglev line is phenomenally expensive, you cannot simply upgrade existing railway tracks. You must build an entirely new, dedicated guideway with all the required magnetic infrastructure from scratch. Tunnels, bridges and land acquisition all contribute to eye-watering price tags. This was recently illustrated in the United States, where a proposed maglev line between Baltimore and Washington, D.C. was cancelled in 2025 due to spiralling costs estimated at nearly $20 billion, along with environmental and community concerns. It shows that while the technology is brilliant, the economics remain a massive challenge. Despite the enormous costs and challenges, maglev technology remains incredibly important for the future of travel. It represents a quantum leap forward, not just an incremental improvement. By eliminating friction, maglevs offer a mode of transport that is not only faster but also potentially more energy efficient at high speeds and quieter for those living near the line. As our world becomes more interconnected and the need for sustainable travel grows, the idea of moving large numbers of people between major cities in a fraction of the time it currently takes becomes increasingly attractive. 
A maglev could turn a three-hour journey into a one-hour trip, fundamentally changing the dynamics of work, business and leisure. Imagine a future where major cities are connected by these ultra-high-speed arteries. A journey from Tokyo to Nagoya, which currently takes about 90 minutes on the fastest bullet train, will be reduced to just 40 minutes. This could effectively merge the two cities into a single economic zone. People could live in one and work in the other without a second thought. This shrinking of distance has profound implications. It could ease pressure on overcrowded housing markets in capital cities, stimulate economic growth in regional areas, and reduce the reliance on short-haul flights, which have a much larger carbon footprint. It's a vision of a more integrated and efficient society, all enabled by the power of magnets. Of course, we are still a long way from a global network of maglev trains. The technology is likely to remain a premium solution reserved for high traffic corridors where the investment can be justified. It is unlikely to replace conventional railways entirely, which will continue to be the workhorses for freight and regional passenger services. Instead, maglevs will likely exist alongside them offering a top-tier option for speed-sensitive travel, much like the Concorde once did for air travel, but hopefully with a more sustainable and economically viable model. The Japanese project is a crucial test case that the whole world is watching. In the end, even if you never get to ride a 310 mile per hour maglev train yourself, its existence matters. It is a powerful symbol of human ingenuity and our relentless push to go faster and build better things. It challenges our assumptions about what is possible and inspires engineers to dream up the next generation of transport. From the stunned silence of the journalists watching that streak of silver disappear in an instant, a powerful message emerges. The future of travel is not just about refining what we have, but about daring to float on a cushion of invisible force, silently and smoothly, into a new era of motion.